Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a video about Terraform providers, specifically third-party providers. So related to the digital rebar Terraform provider, we had to be able to build a Terraform provider in a way that other people could get it. This was enabled in version 0.13 and later in Terraform, which allows you to create third-party providers. This video is about how to create a third-party provider. It is not specifically digital rebar content. So in order to create this provider, Terraform provides a registration system. And this can be sort of tricky. When you're first trying to use build a third-party provider, you have to preload it in the cache for it to load. However, it won't find it in the cache until you've done the registration work necessary to publish it, or at least that was my experience. Uh, your mileage may vary as Terraform continues to improve, but this process will be helpful for your publishing that provider at any point, and you need to do it. So if you're planning a third-party provider, start here. Now what you'll see in this case, I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you, is there are there's details about how to build this, and this is the instruction specifically about building the 3.0 provider. And I'm going to walk you through what this code does and, and how it looks. Um, specifically, it's going to point you to the registry readme file where we have stored some of these pieces. So I'm going to go into the registry. I'm going to look at the readme, the readme, which is actually just below. And this is a reference to the Terraform documentation. If you found this video, you've probably already read this documentation and been scratching your head. I'm going to walk you through it um, and let you let you see what they're talking about. So it, generally they want to have you build a host name, host space. The way this is structured is that you build a third party provider space. That third party provider looks something like this. This is the new block that's required in Terraform 14 and will be added for you in version .13 required in 14. Uh, and you need, to, you need to or should do this for all your providers, even ones that are currently in the registry and to be specific. You have to provide the version of Terraform that it uses and then you link to your required providers. In this case, this is the digital rebar provider. There is a source link for it, extras, rack and IO, rack and digital rebar and then what versions of it it provides, and then the actual provider. The challenge is, is that having you need to build a website that provides all of the information that's necessary to register and download this provider for multiple architectures from this information alone. And there is a very specific schema that is pointed out by this information specifically. And then you have to build and sign all of the appropriate files for that. Now I've written a script that does this for Terra for Digital Rebar's Terraform provider. You're welcome, to, it's open. You're welcome to copy it, clone it, and do whatever you need. If you find something, uh, pull requests would be happily accepted. You will also need to build your own uh, PGP key for, for all this stuff to work. Now they describe how this works. There's a provider, there's available locations, namespaces, what the file, the JSON reference of the file actually looks like. And I'm going to show you how we actually we build all of these pieces out of that registry. So back over here, instead of working from here, I'm going to work from my code editing tool. And we have our build.sh file. And this is just a script that's going to bring in all of this information. So I have some base architecture pieces in my version. And it's literally going to loop through over all of the OSs that I've defined. And then it's going to go through and build the full architecture pieces, all those files, all the outputs. It's going to copy them into the right places. In this case, I have also encoded um, the S3 uploads. So not only do I build these files, I also upload them to S3. Reminder. Even if you are planning to do local development which, with a cached copy, having these references in S3 or some other web server, doesn't have to be S3, of course, um, 
will allow you to get per past that first bootstrapping where you need something that you can then replace. Um, I found that this made a huge difference in being able to just do debug and troubleshoot, and so having all this stuff work was, was really important. And I actually had to build the JSON structures and things like that to make it go. The way all of this worked is that I ended up with a reference file. So in, in this place, there is an expected tree hierarchy in which, I think that's captured in the readme file, Yes, where it actually expects under rack end digital rebar to find a version, an OS, and an arch. And then the actual binary Terraform provider is in this arch file. Um, and so you have to go through and literally build up this exact directory structure in a way that can be referenced from the client trying to achieve the, the Terraform plugin. And what I did to make things a little bit easier is I started with some reference JSON objects. Um, and these, where possible, will be uploaded and then I can replace the JSON. So I don't have to go through and make sure that I have valid JSON or build the JSON from scratch. I can just build in the pieces that I need. But you'll notice there's a lot of places where I have to add and replace values for all this stuff to work. Um, and that's what this build script does, um, including, so it's going to upload my Terraform, well-known Terraform. So it has to be in dot well-known, Terraform.json. My goal with this video is not to walk you through every single step of the way, but to assume that you can read Bash to an extent and figure out how to go through, build the zip files that you're going to need, because you have to have the zip files, checksum them, store the checksums, sign them. So you have to use GPG signatures, tr store all those things. Every one of these single lines of bash is hours of discovery work on my part to try and get this stuff going. Pull back the key ID, which has to be included in the zip file, and then actually putting together all of those bits and pieces storing them in the JSON is appropriate for each architecture that I'm uploading and then uploading those all together. So as you can see at the end of the day, I actually have for every architecture that I want to support, I have to upload um, four files, the signatures, checksums, a zip file, and the JSON structure. Plus I have to upload the well-known piece that establishes the initial record. Without all of these pieces in place, your Terraform third-party Terraform provider will not register correctly. Wow, so that's a lot. Um, if you have questions about this process, um, you know, feel free to reach out. I, I could not find a lot. I'm doing this because uh, there, besides these pages that Terraform HashiCorp provided in their docs, uh, which I didn't find complete, uh, there really was very little support. So hopefully this video will find you, will make you feel like you have a Terraform hug, um, such as that is. And, um, you know, if nothing else, you'll also stop by, check out Digital Rebar, and realize phew, just how much work we save you when it comes to infrastructure automation. This is Rob Hirschfeld. I hope this was helpful. If there's anything else in this video that you think could be helpful, please let me know. Thank you.